Yeah, yeah. 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 Where's it going? Hi guys, you join us here at the Central Hotel. We got a star-studded lineup for the evening. Starting off with Tibbs and Steve. With Tibbs at the table now. On reds, I'm guessing. Mr. Start is frames. I'm not sure. Followed by myself, Ben, against Mark, captain of the team. All four of us playing the same team, so a bit of a friendly rivalry tonight. Playing because it's the league game. So you've got me trying to talk you through this first game as. Steve throws an absolute wild one in to start. He's looking over, smirking. Should be in disgust. Tibbs just plays a little plant and decides to leave himself on nothing. But when you're known as the luckiest player in two leagues, there's always a shot on the field. Bit of a poor start from both players in this one. So I'd imagine we're going to see Steve try and get his arm blow in, play the one down the cushion. Also be out for the one next to the red. Ah, nice little shot there, just dropped in. Left himself a nice angle here to pop this, come out. But he just hacks it in and misses it by a mile. Guess I should be a bit careful what I say being on in the next game. I want to make a rod for my own back. Tibbs again, just showing his absolute class with the position of play there and rattling the red, waving his cue around. Not quite sure what he's waving his cue at, but uh, if he played better position, I think he would have been alright on the ball. He's then Steve a chance. There's one tricky ball, is he misses out by so much he doesn't even cover the pocket. Steve yet to get into this game. Stretching, so a little old bird, he's just overrun now. You haven't played one good positional shot yet. You know, first frame. Table looks like it's playing nice and quick, so perhaps just take a little time to get acclimatized. Yeah, it's a nice little shot there, just leave the red for next time. I said Steve got a one tricky L on the bottom, crushing by the red. Perhaps he can play it in off the red and not entirely sure. No, he's played to be bad a bit. It's not a bad effort. Could have worked out a lot worse, but the red a little safer. And the way Tibbs have been putting his white ball, I don't think there's any chance he's going to get on that red. No, oh, he's just throwing his arm at everything and getting lucky. Somebody who Tibbs in the background shouting in disgust. Although he's probably had about three chances to win this frame. Oh, it's. It's not a good start from either player at the moment. It's uh, poor to say the least. Tibbs here thinking he's a Jedi Knight trying to use his mind control to stop the white. Just soft enough to not go in off. And just not enough pace on the red. Would have been on the black for the first positional shot he's played all frame, but he's left Steve a relatively easy finish here. One that I think he's going to need to have to take these kind of chances to win this frame and win the match, really. You can't keep throwing his arm at shots and missing balls by such a distance and expect to win this. 
Yeah, the game's best of 15, so first rate. So a good start in Poland is if one player manages to sort of win the first four or five frames, then they could quickly run away with it. Testing here on the cushion, Steve renowned for his ability off the cushion. And as Tibbs usually says, you must have missed it there for it to go in so cleanly. Oh, a bit unfortunate there to flick the back. He just rolled past that. I think he would have been on in the middle. Left himself a tricky double. Played it confident. Oh, he's that's wiped his feet, but it's gone in. He's taken out a nice finish there. Alternating breaks. Uh, I think Steve broke first, so obviously the players, the players ragging up for themselves, I assume. No ragging up for each other. So all we wait for is a contentious moment when one player has a bad, bad split and blames on a dodgy rack. I don't think it'll take long for Tips to start waving his cue in the air if that happens. Going for the Chris Lowbridge lucky bounce there before the break. Tips, uh, Tips plays on the same team in two leagues as Steve. So, uh, you know, familiar with each other's game, playing a Tuesday and a Thursday together. Tibbs claims to have a couple of dishes to his name, although the uh, league table on a Tuesday says differently. He says he only has the one, but that's a story for another day, and I'm sure Tibbs will get a very different version of events than the league seems to believe. So, Steve here. Uh, playing the yellows, just roll into the black, you're trying to offer the one in the middle, but he's overrun that, neither player again, the pace of the table at the moment. Yeah, I don't, I hope this standard doesn't continue, otherwise it's going to be a long night for me. But that'll be the uh, only source of entertainment, I think, judging by the standard so far. Yeah, Tibbs just deciding to put four balls safe instead of just two. Clever there, I'm looking over, he's got his head in his hands in disgust. Steve, I've got many options here. Let's see him play this thin, try and kiss up the other yellow. Yeah, it's a nice shot. He leaves himself an angle, it looks a bit straight, but a bit tricky to get on either yellow here uh, because they're not in the best position on the table to get a good position, but he's killed that cleanly and he's landed on the top cushion. He's able to just drop this in or the white into the red, um, or maybe roll through and just avoid the red. He should leave the yellow in the middle pocket. Yeah, he's played that nicely. He played that as well as he could, really. Tricky shot here to pop this and uh, avoid the snooker behind the red for the black because, yeah, there's always going to be a tricky one. He's had to play with a bit of pace, not the snooker himself. And they're always a bit tighter when you're playing them and they look on the camera. Tibbs now having an opportunity to get his arm going. Pop this into the cluster. Played that a bit softly. I think uh, we've got another chance though. Again, he's just. It's just played out a bit soft, lacking a bit of conviction. Um, yet another chance to break out the safe ball. He's been a bit unlucky there. He's playing an aggressive shot and hasn't quite come off. Up the cushions at that pace, not always easy, but Steve's going to do well to land on the black here because, oh well, do well to pop the yellow to start with, but uh, he has to be in a tricky position. I expect to see a bit of safety here from Tibbs. Oh. I'm not entirely sure what he played the pot there. Um, I would say judging by his white, I don't think he played the pot there, but judging by his white so far this game, it hasn't been the best, so... Give him an opportunity to pop this, leave him to have an one in the middle to open up the black. Yeah, that looks about perfect to me. Come down, can the black get out? No, he's completely mishit there. You consider himself unlucky there, but it's a poor shot to hit the yellow, not the black. It's a good hit, he's hit it at the right angle, um, but he's left the black in the pocket and an easy yellow here. Yeah, Steve just mops up this opportunity that shouldn't really have been given to him. And that's 2-0 to Steve. And in a race to eight, 
female lead can be very important as it can be put a deficit to come back from. One player gets a bit ahead of steam, they can roll off a couple of frames and all of a sudden the deficit becomes almost insurmountable. You know, I don't expect Hibs to keep playing at this level. I expect him to up his game a little bit and, you know, put a couple, string a good couple of pots together. Steve going for the, uh, not so much a cut break, but just breaking from a, from the angle across the table. Uses uh, separate cues, one to break and one to play with. Recently changed his playing cue and kept his old cue, which is a bit heavier, just to break with, because he's got a bit of a smaller tip now. Problem that affects many men, probably. Um, he just doesn't want to break with that, he's afraid he's going to, he's afraid he's going to do damage to the uh, business end of the queue. Tibbs, you never know what queue he's going to play with week by week, he, uh, he likes to swap and change his queues. Doesn't believe that he's ever had a bad week or played a bad shot, it's just the queue. Um, which he's probably going to blame for that one as well. So Steve here with two shots, I think you've just got to develop your balls here, but be careful because there's a chance it's black could go in off the red and uh, cause a bit of problems. He's played that a bit negatively, he's, I can see what he's tried, he's tried to pop the one and open that little cluster, but it's not quite worked and I think I would have gone directly into them there just to get those balls open. Obviously playing black ball rules so the two shots don't carry like they do in world rules and have a free ball for the two shots. But Steve in a good position here, he's, uh, he's got a, a key pocket when looking at Red's covered. Um, he's played a terrible shot there. Um, I don't know if he's still able to just sneak this in, and if he does, he's got a perfect angle to get his yellow, but that seems fraught with danger, so I can't see Steve taking that one on. Perhaps if he'd um, had a good start at the start of the match and he felt he was playing well and his arm was going, he would have tipped that in. But uh, he's played a good plant there, good recovery shot. Tricky bridge in here. Um, yeah, there's never been a pocket there in all the years I've played for. But uh, I don't know what table Steve's used to play on. Tough one here, queuing across the cushion. Tibbs just uh, playing safe, he's got a good white ball there. Um, he has left the yellow on, but I think he's relying on Steve to pop this, pop the yellow on the pocket, open the pack up, and release his balls a little. Yeah, Steve's just throwing his arm at that one a little bit, and He's opened the balls up a little. Tips still got one safe ball that's going to need a bit of work to be bad at. But chance here, he's been a bit unfortunate there, just not quite enough side. But another opportunity, but yeah, he's uh, can't help but feel he's rushed that a little bit. And he has been unfortunate on that one. But this looks like he's rushed that shot a little bit and thrown a bit of a wild one in, trying to obviously. Pop the ball closest to the rail and come into the black to open the red up. It's giving Steve an opportunity. He's played a really nice shot there. He's, uh, he's developed all his balls. Probably a bit unfortunate to put the black on the cushion. But it's not a difficult pot. Um, as long as we get him behind the black, it should be pretty routine. Looking over at the table, it's a little bit further off the cushion than it looks on the camera. It's a test here to start and he's missed it by an absolute mile. I think that ball's ended up in a different postcode. So, uh, Tibbs now. It's, uh, he hasn't been left much here. He's got a very tricky red to the top left as we're looking. If he misses, he plays this in a nice way. He's almost guaranteed to cover the black. Yeah, he's missed that by a long way. He's not really, he's not threatening the pocket in any way there. Mm. Tibbs would be disappointed with the way he's played so far, I think. Based on league form and statistics, you know, you'd say Steve is a favourite, as he's had a bit of a better season so far than Tibbs. But, uh, you know, we know Tibbs has the capability to roll off frames, but today just been a bad day in the office so far for Tibbs, but he's a far better player than we're seeing at the minute. 
But, uh, you know, this whole thing comes good and you can put a couple of good frames together and provide a bit of entertainment on the camera, really. Again, it's a test done. It's a, it's a really tough out for me. You're looking at at least one double if you're playing there. I think he's just playing safe here. He's going to come off the red, try and land in behind the black and red. That's a, that's a really good effort. He's been a little bit unlucky there, to be honest. Let's Steve this, if he can just drop this in now, get a nice angle one in the middle. I think he's okay. The other one will be too straight because he's going to have to move a long angle on the back. If he can just pinch a little bit of this and screw over, like that, he's played that well. Um, not the easiest of blacks would have been, another foot on the white would have been perfect. But he's part of that black. He's played that black nicely. And that's 3 0 now. And I can imagine that Tibbs will not be happy with the performance he's put in so far. Uh, you've probably heard of him, as he is a big deal. Uh, number one minesweep player in South Wales. He's also pretty good. Uh, the old solitaire as well, often seen on S4C during lose matches. Uh, that's the uh, Uk Club Rugby. Yeah, playing on his uh, minesweeper and solitaire. He's adamant that he's doing properly, but I don't believe him, and uh, I'm pretty sure he is on uh, solitaire. So Steve, as he's playing, you may notice uh, the top. Uh, bearing the Admiral logo, that's not personal sponsorship. They haven't got that much money to spare uh, to be sponsoring Steve to play pool. But they do sponsor our team, uh, clearly doing well, top of our current division on a Thursday. You know, we got a week off tonight. So, get a chance that the teams could uh, close the gap on us and possibly overtake us. But we're not too concerned. We haven't had a great season, but we can always. Uh, there's room for improvement, and we're still top of the league, which holds well. Thankfully, Steve and Tibbs haven't been playing like they have been tonight all season, particularly Tibbs. Um, otherwise, he wouldn't have won a game, I don't think. He's played a better shot there. Um, obviously, he was, he was full ball snookered, so no need to hit the cushion after contact with the ball, and he's snookered Steve right back, so uh, most of us do make contact with the red and looks like he's managed that and he's reduced tips his options to just this one at the top and I don't think this can be cut in, but Tibbs may prove it wrong, he does, that's a, that's a very very good pop there to uh, cut that in at such a thin angle. Unfortunate to uh, leave himself on nothing, but again, he's full ball snooker, so easier to get a white safe in those sort of situations. He's not have to worry about it in the cushion after coming back to the ball. I think Steve may be looking at the plan to develop the black and the red. Oh, how that has gone in, I don't know. Using the uh, the Pro Cup balls, which uh, I don't know if they are, but they play as if they're a little heavier than the usual balls. So if you get a ball right in the lip of the pocket, they always seem more likely to drop in, and they do lend themselves to the, uh, the skill shot available in black, black ball rules. Um, so that ball it in the near jaw. I think with the normal arm, this ball wouldn't necessarily have gone in, but uh, with the Pro Cup, it just dropped. Steve tried to another plan, maybe pushing the ball out a little, um, left Tibbs the opportunity to play a safety and looks like he's played a decent one there, but unlucky uh, if he's left this red on. But I'm not entirely sure, looking over at the table from where I'm sat, I don't think it, uh, I don't think it, it pops, but I may be wrong. No, I didn't. Steve? We turn in the favour, playing a nice safety there, yeah, it's a nice shot. And with that red going down the table, uh, limit Tibbs' his options on which board he can hit without leaving anything on. So you just played a bit of pace, we're a little bit on that, really. Um, didn't really get any, but at least he didn't give away the two visits. But again, it's Steve with another good opportunity to win another frame here. Yeah, 
potentially go four 0 up and get halfway with Tibbs needing to win the rest of the match eight three. Steve again, you know, using all that pocket there. I think, you know, I consider that a little bit lucky to drop in really at that pace as well. And neither player really queuing well and hitting the heart of the pocket with their pots. Um, Steve just, well, I can't believe he's played that down there. He's, he's just thrown that in. I'm not sure of the thought process in, but uh, I can't say I agree with that shot. Tibbs can uh, fall on figure, you know, he's looking a bit disheartened by, uh, by the way he's playing so far and he's, he's not really got close to the pop, but all his yellows are open and they're spread out from one another now, just the black does cause a problem. Um, I think, you know, Tibbs is, he's tried to play safe, I don't think he's gone for the ball, he's tried to get away from getting the yellow, but I think Tibbs is trying to keep it tight, not let Steve build up too large of a lead, but I think Tibbs needs to maybe have a look and think that he needs to attack a little bit now and get his arm going to try and get back into the match. And I think Steve has, didn't fancy the cut there, so he's tried to pull the white back in behind the black, and it's not bad effort, but... He's left the gap. Tibbs has played a nice shot there. He's been unlucky that the white has got cable. A full ball contact on that red, and he's right by the yellow and perfect. I don't think that's the worst result because he can definitely pop this, uh, definitely pop this red. But uh, the white will be traveling a little. More difficult to get on this next red. It's, um, oh, well, he's. Uh, a bit of a howler there. Just drop it in dead weight, leave the weight on the bottom, towards the bottom, push in, and you can't tee the shot. But Steve has decided to go the, uh, the, uh, the peculiar route. And he's hit the black there. If he's popped that red, this, it makes this clearance a lot easier for Tibbs. The fact that he's left the red on the pocket makes it a little bit more difficult. But, you know, the black does pop in that middle pocket. or doesn't necessarily need to cover the pocket with the red. Um, I think Tibbs may just roll the black onto the red, leave it on the pocket. The playing of this way, you need to make sure you get on the yellow. He's been unlucky there, but... I think he would have liked to have left himself a plant and not have the black on the cushion, but he should be okay here. He's just going to play, he's left himself a little bit straight here, so he's got to punch this in, which always makes it more difficult. Won't be surprised if we see him just roll this over the pocket. No, he's played the aggressive shot, and it's not a bad result. The, uh, he could have left that a lot worse for Steve. I expect just a little roll up snooker here, which. Steve plays. I don't think he's got um, for Hazzy, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, that's sort of, it's not a bad shot, it's only going like that for Steve. Um, I quite fancy him to treble this, miss a double on the near side and treble it. No, he's gone straight in, that's a good double. In fairness, Tibbs played that, knowing the double was on, and pressure on Steve there, because if he misses that black, then the yellows are dropping, and no guarantee the black's going to land safe. Steve now 4-0 up, halfway to victory, trying to look calm and composed, um, even though inside he's probably very, very excited. Um, played once on the camera before against myself, I played both these players, uh, when I played Tibbs he's been a lot better than tonight. Uh, raced out into a 6-2 lead, but I managed to find my stride and won the next eight. Uh, went to a 10-6 lead, eventually winning 11-7. Um, uh, when I played against Steve, I think I went 9-1 up in a best of 21. Um, and sort of Steve brought it back a little bit. I think it ended 11-6 or 11-7, which I was a bit disappointed with, but any win is a win. So, like I said, just best of 15 tonight because we got two games on the camera. Uh, Tibbs here now on red. He's got a good opportunity here. Um, you know, off Steve's break, I think if he can uh, 
this year off Steve's break, it'll give him a bit of confidence moving forward now. A bit of confidence that his arm is going. I think the red he's looked at is the right one to play. Just drop this down the cushion, leave yourself an angle for the one in the middle. But he's played the more difficult one at the top. Yeah, he's just dropped that in. If he can just drop this one into the top left corner, run the white dog, he can face in the middle, roll up for the other red. And, uh, I'm not sure he's played it that way, but if he did, it was a good shot. If he can just cut this back into the middle. Oh, he's missed that one. Perfect on the red as well, and the black was a drop in. This yellow passes a red. It's not a bad opportunity for yellows as they all feed on to one another, but uh, Steve's decided the pot in's overrated. And, uh, he just covered it. Tibbs has played again. Tibbs, Tibbs has played a nice shot there, and he has got very unlucky that time. Um, you know, there's been a couple of occasions where he's played shots and been unlucky. Sometimes he, he hasn't played the shot particularly well and been unlucky, but that time he played the shot well and was unlucky. So um, I think he'll be disappointed with that one. So Steve now with a uh, chance of yellows. Decided he'll uh, try and pop this time as opposed to missing. He's on the plant again. I think Steve, on a couple of occasions, has pushed the ball up a little bit too much and played plants without being necessary. He's had easier pots on. With a plant, is always a risk. Um, Tibbs and like there just caught the jaw on the double. But yeah, the problem with, the problem with a plant is. You can control them to a certain extent, but you're never fully confident where the initial ball you're hitting is going to land. And I think a lot of times when you play a plant as well, particularly the more difficult ones, you focus so much on the plant, the positional side of the shot can be sacrificed. So, not always the safest option. Tibbs now left a double. I think he's got a. Well, he had a big pocket down the bottom of the yellow, but caught the black on the way and almost. Potted that red into the middle bag. No, I think Steve has to play the plant too. I think if he plays in double kisses the, uh, the yellow on the pocket, I think the yellow will go in with a double kiss with the plant too, and the other yellow should stay in the pocket. No, I was uh, completely wrong. Did well caught in that shot. Tricky, I don't think the black. I don't think the black goes. I can't see it at the minute because. Tibbs is uh, playing a shot where I love. He's played a nice red there. Yeah, the black side, I think it goes. It's, it's tight, but it does go. Yeah, he's played a nice game. Hopefully, that'll give Tibbs a bit of confidence now. 4 1. He's looking a little bit happier with himself. Yeah, he's raised his arms in a sarcastic manner to say victory. Oh, he's playing. I think he thinks he's high Potter and his kid with a Quidditch broom now. Um, he's riding it around the room. Looking over the other side of the room, my uh, opposition for tonight, Mark, is uh, he's offering to bring my drink over. Very kind of him. Um, you know, clear to see he's trying to get in the zone to play me. He's obviously heard about the hype and clearly believes the hype. Even had a special haircut ready for, for the match. That'll be a treat for you on the camera to see that. <laughs> Mark, we know for uh, wearing some of the tightest tops in Wales. We're not entirely convinced they are clothes, but uh, come straight out of the Dulux tin instead. So back to the action now. I shouldn't commentate on fashion. All well, my flu commentary is much better. But uh, open table here now. Well, Steve deciding that he doesn't want to play with his break kills, so uh, swap some over. He's on red here. If he can play this and oh well, I don't know. He's just played that so there's so much pace. Um, I think if he just drops that in and holds on the yellow that he can and he had a chance to play. The, uh, the red tied up for the arrow. Tibbs has gone. Reds again. He's been very unlucky days. He's played. He's pulled out a really nice shot there. And again, he's he's been so unfortunate again. Um, but the signs of there, he's he's killing the ball more positively, and he's making the pots now. He was missing earlier in the match. 
So hopefully he's uh, got a bit of confidence in his queuing on now and um, he starts seeing some better frames. He's not happy with that as uh, Steve flips the ball, but in all honesty, I, I think that's um, I think that's worked in Tibbs' favour because Steve caught in that ball instead of taking away a ball he could open up his yellow by the black with. So. Even though it looks like a fluke for Steve, it's not left him on match and it's taken away what could have been a key ball in the frame. So, even though he's potted two balls in one, I would consider Steve to be a little bit unfortunate with that shot there. I have to do a bit of thinking to do now. I don't think this yellow passes into the top right corner. And I think you'd be reluctant to play this up into the bottom right because it's a thin clip. Um, I think you're just looking at leaving the white maybe down by the bottom left pocket, coming thin off the yellow closest to the white, and leaving the white near the bottom left pocket. No, uh, Steve decided to plant the red in again. I think just trying too much, I think. Uh, trying to push the ball out and go in for too much. Sometimes it should be keeping it tight and playing it safe. Uh, his tips just played shot there to develop his red. Not great with the white, but uh, one good pop here. Yeah. There you go, and frames at his mercy now. Top right, bottom the middle, top left, black in the top middle. And uh, yeah, this this should be a formality. Oh, he's been tell you what, he's used all of that pocket there. No, he's, uh, I think he's concentrated too much on the cannon on the arrow there, taking his eye off the ball. And again, Steve Lee, you know, he's he's played that plant, but um, he's developed both balls, and the red was always safe. But I think he developed those balls and left that white in behind the blacks. So you can see the red. Has he still got one safe yellow? It's going to have to develop or land on. Um, that's a poor miss. And he's not got away with this one, as he has done a couple of times in the previous frames. And perhaps this is a sign of the luck changing, as Tiff plays a really nice control positional shot there, and drops the black in. And he's just going mad, potting all the balls like a student trying to get his money's worth out of the frame. So, perhaps this is the tight turn a little bit. Um, I think on a couple of occasions, Steve has tried to push the ball out a little bit when there's no need to. Perhaps try and keep it a little tighter. I think it's 4-2 at the minute for Steve. Um, so Tibbs doing well to pull this back and starting to make a bit of a contest out of this now. And unlike earlier, he's uh, capitalizing on Steve's mistakes and the opportunities that Steve is leaving for him, whereas in the first frame Steve was um, not under much pressure because even when Tibbs was, even when he was missing, Tibbs just wasn't taking the opportunities that were offered to him. Um, so Steve there, he's, he's got a nice split there. Um, the red and the yellow at the top of the tail of the tie. I think yellow of the balls here just because the red to the bottom left is tied up and the opening yellow is significantly easier than the opening red queuing over the ball. He's, he's not played a good position on shot there. I think he's focused on making sure he makes a yellow and gets on the colour that he wants as opposed to whisking the pot for position and offering the table over to Tibbs. Yeah, it did feel a nice shot there. I think he would have preferred that red to stay up, but uh, the chance now this this red near to the bottom cushion will uh, go off the yellow as Tibbs just throws his arm at another one. Doesn't seem to be queuing at his best tonight. I say he doesn't seem to be, I know for a fact he's not. Um, and he'll be, he'll be disappointed. He'll be disappointed with the... Uh, with the way that's done. Oh, no, Steve's just getting into a discussion with the barman about the volume of the music. You may have heard the uh, 
the music bump up there and uh, Steve doesn't need a second invitation to have a whinge about something. Yeah, Steve's, Steve's, Steve's yellow. I'm just helping out there because the players are... Uh, I'll try not to swear on stream. Um, so can't find an appropriate adjective for them. But not the brightest, we get what colours they are. And uh, Steve decided even though he's yellows, that he doesn't want to pop any. Um, Tim's pop this now. I think this red, he can just play this now off the yellow and really take control of this frame. Which is done. If that stays up, yeah, and Tim's in complete control of this frame now. He's got two of Steve's balls tied up in that bottom left corner. So, um, as it stands, Steve a lot of work to do. I don't like that shot at all. Um, the one bit of control, the one bit of control Steve had, he's completely given away. I think Tibbs is Tibbs is considering that as being lucky because he's come off and he's bought the yellow, but that's just opened the frame up completely for Tibbs. I don't understand that shot at all. The only bit of control is that red was tied up by two yards at the top, and now you look at the reds and. They're all there for the taking, and the yellows are tied up. So, Tibbs will moan and say he's been unlucky, but because Steve played that shot, he's actually been lucky. Yeah, it's a nice shot there from Steve. He's just dropped the yellow down into the gap between the two reds just to uh, cut off the plan. Tibbs now, he, he is in a good position. He's got all four balls and the black in one half of the table. Um, Steve's played an aggressive shot and he's been unlucky there. I think it was, he was asking, you know, it was asking a lot because you had three balls in that area so there was always balls blocking the red in the pocket. But he's, um, he's played a nice shot there. I think the black may pass off the jaw there which Steve won't be delighted with but he has got a bit of control over the uh, the red at the top of the table again. Tibbs just opted in to try and bring the white up the table. I don't think he's tried to pop that. Yeah, Steve just putting his balls in a better position. Um, but again, I think this frame is Tibbs is to lose by the way the balls lie at the moment. One tough red again, and he's pushed that black, and that black definitely goes. Now, one good pot here, and the frame is Tibbs's. Oh, he's decided to try and drop that in the middle. I think I would have uh, tried playing that in the top corner with a bit of top spin from above the yellow. Play the uh, red in the middle after that, but still, it's not a bad leave. Yeah, Steve has tried to cover the black. And he's just absolutely mulled it. Um, ooh, Tibbs is just about it to cushion there with the red. We're giving away two shots if you have a bit to cushion there. Um, still not bad, I think. You know, Steve has options here. You can try and be aggressive and play this yellow in the middle of the table to the top left and hopefully somehow gets one of those two balls in because they don't look set up for the pocket and three the other yellow or you can just try and do what you did in the previous shot and just make sure you take this pocket yeah that's i think that's a sensible option <clears throat> i think steve he's, he's played a little bit tighter in this frame and he's um he's slowly wrestled control back and he's Come up to him, dear. He can just get this yellow out just by the red on the pocket, and he's not really giving much back to Tibbs because that black is pretty tied up in the corner, and there's not a big window to get the white over there. Um, yeah, Steve's Steve's played an aggressive shot there, and he's he's played that really nicely. He's been unfortunate that that yellow is. Tied up on the black. He deserved better than that. He deserved all his balls in the open after that shot because, uh, yeah, he played a good aggressive shot. He's tried to put left hand side on it, but the white ball forgot to spin by the look of him. Oh, no, the, uh, the plant went, so it wasn't an issue. Two options here. You can screw this yellow back, which I think. I would screw back off this and just leave the black in the same pot with the yellow. Oh, he's 
play with top spin instead. He's played that nice. Just make sure of the black now. And Matt's 5 2. Yeah, that's a really nice finish from Steve there. Good, good initial shot to set up that finish. And um, he finished it off well. He uh, took his chance there. A nice little clearance. Steve clearly doesn't believe in protecting the cloth that we play on every week in the league. Um, not use the bit of spare cloth that's there to mark the balls up on. Um, even though we'd probably be the first one to moan if there were little divots in the table there because of it. So Tibbs now will be looking to stamp some authority back on this now. Managed to bring two frames back at the 4-2. He's come up dry and he's got a lovely split on those yellows. Um, they're all there waiting to be potted. Um, two red safe as well. This is a chance now for Steve to possibly put one of the final nails in the coffin for Tibbs to dish him off his own break. Go 6-2 up and really, really take this game by the scruff of the neck. In the context of match, it's a big, big frame. You know, there's a big difference between 6-2 and 5-3. At 5-3, I would still put Steve as a favourite, but, you know, you wouldn't write Tibbs off at that point by any stretch, but at 6-2, it would be a big, big ask for Tibbs to get back into it. And Steve has tried to pot a yellow in the middle that, for me, I was that never went. But uh, that's what Steve does. He just saw a wild run in every now and again and catch everyone off guard. He likes to keep us on his toes. Much like his brother Chris, um, official flower waterer in B and Q, according to Cooperman. Yeah, it did play a nice shot there. He's played that, he played that well. He's got on one of his tricky reds early. Just drop this in now. Yeah, this is. Uh, Slowly opening up the frame here, oh, and he's he's trying to power that in to get the back to screw it back, digging into the ball, um, and he's not really got the backspin on him either. But he's missed the pot more importantly and left Steven. Been nice shot, little billiards type shot there just to uh, play the white off the ball into another to pot that. He can just play this one in the middle now, screw the white out. Leave the yellow into the same pocket in the middle. I don't know. I don't know why he's played that again. It's it's unnecessary. I don't think there was any need to move that yet. Oh, he could have either tried to screw past it or put a bit of top on the white and gone inside it and played into the bottom middle. Um, and he's played a board on the cushion. It looked like he's played that in frustration a little because uh, he's played it quickly and he's missed it. And Tibbs has put him in a and snooker here, which isn't easy to get out of for the bridge, and I'm surprised Steve is going this way. That's a good hit, but he's opened up one red that was tied up, so I'm a bit surprised he's gone that way, even though he's opened the balls up for himself. He's also opened the table up for Tibbs. Perhaps he's thinking Tibbs isn't playing very well, and he's going to throw the gauntlet down to him a little bit. Um, thinking that Tibbs isn't really playing well enough to take these balls out but you know it's an opportunity and that's a really good pop from Tibbs that is so unfortunate and if that ball stays in the pocket I think Tibbs wins this frame no problem but now he's gonna have to play a tricky little shot here yeah. yeah he's Tibbs has been so unfortunate there. he's played a really good shot he's forced an angle he's got a white down to develop his safe ball and dropped him and left him on nothing easy. Um, Steve a bit of a test. He's killed that well. Um, he's not good off the cushion usually. Um, but he's overrunning. He's, and he can't see the yellow he wanted to play. But he's played off the cushion and he's played that really well. And he's been unlucky so I think the luck has cancelled itself out a little bit in this frame. They both played good shots and been unlucky. Um, Steve probably opened a black with him to his rescue, cover the red where hasn't, and one good pop from Tibbs. Oh, and he's missed it. That's a pop that you would back him to get, but tonight it's just not going his way, and he's um, 
He's rattled that one in the jaws, which is unfortunate. Then he's left Steve two sitters to the middle pocket. And this looks like 6 2. And it is. It's 6 2 to Steve. And you got to say, with the way that Tibbs has been playing in general across the frames, and Steve only needing two more frames to win, that you've got to fancy. Uh, Steve to wrap this one up within the next couple of frames, really. Tibbs perhaps needs to consider walking away from the table for five, maybe a quick toilet break, gather his thoughts. Um, but he seems eager, seems eager to get on with it. Steve's got a really nice split there. He's caught that break really well. Um, you know, I, I use a break here myself, and I'm sure you hear Tibbs comment on it, as he always does when I'm playing. Um, but Steve's got a really nice split there. I think people have a have this thing about the break, that if you don't pop, it's a bad break. But popping off the break is luck. You know, I consider a good break where you get a good split to the balls. And I don't know what Steve has done there. The yellows were drop-ins. And he's absolutely thrown out by the run in there. Like I was saying about um, like I was saying about the breaks. Um, you know, good breaks here, good split at the balls. Again, balls in the other half of the table. And it's just luck like whether one finds a pocket or not. Um, and Steve had a Steve had a good a good split there. So I'm lucky enough to have balls to win. Yeah, Steve's just come over and said he's played a shocker. Um, I didn't think it was that good to be honest. <laughs> Um, yeah, Tibbs just done what he could there. He's just developed a safe ball, um, left that over the pocket. Probably seeing Steve play his last shot, thinking this guy's not going to tear up on this visit after that. Um, but you know, all the yellows are still there, just waiting to be potted. And he's missed that, and he's been lucky he's missed it because he's not got much in the way of position there, and he's covered a pocket for Tibbs in one of his reds. So, Tibbs has managed to cover two of the top pockets now and almost part of the black in the middle. He will probably be absolutely spewing, as he likes to say. And I sh I'm pretty sure there'll be a bit of banter on the commentary in the next game after this game. And Tibbs will be looking at his luck and the way some of the balls have rolled in Steve's favour throughout this game. Um, but, you know, unfortunately, it's part of the game we choose to play. And nobody likes to get unlucky, but we we'll have to try and deal with it. It's quite ironic coming from me because I'm one of the worst losers I know. And we'll go on absolutely ages if someone gets lucky. Yeah, Steve, now he's he's just got simple pops here. I don't know if this yellow passes or if he needs to play the plan, but... Yeah, that's passed quite comfortably. So, uh, yeah, you've got to fancy just take the two up the top, leave the one down the bottom. Is that his better position for the black? Just below the middle bag. And yeah, he's. Yeah, that's just pulled up, so he's okay. I think you're just going to try and screw this one straight back, but be careful of the red in the middle of the table. Um, didn't want to be tossed to the cushion, and he's just, I think, come out far enough where he can comfortably sort of chill with the bottom of the white just to drag this back a little bit. Yeah, he played that nicely. And this was 7-2 written all over it, which um, I think the scoring no one really expected, including Steve probably in, uh, in fairness. I think he would have expected a stern test from Tibbs. Um, you know, I'm not sure what the bookies had on this game, um, but you know, I think the bookies have uh, made some money because Steve is in his trademark uh, flares. A lot of people would have put money uh, on Steve to be wearing his uh, disco flares that he's known for. I mean, he looks like a man with no feet. So Steve now just looking for one more frame to wrap this game up. Tibbs, and I think he's just got to keep plugging away. Um, 
you know, there's still a chance, you know, he's absolutely hammered up there. He is absolutely hammered up. And he's not really left himself on much other than a tricky sort of cut back into a blind pocket on this yellow. Right, well, play red in the middle. Um, yeah, he's played that nice. That's a nice little flick there because that's um, open up the black and red. Perhaps he can, I don't know if he can pop this red close to the black and screw up the table. No, he's, uh, he's played into the middle of the wet instead. Um, I think he's still got his red. Yeah, he's, you can see Tibbs, he's picked up his pace here. Um, perhaps thinking, well, the pressure's off, i got nothing to lose. Let's just have a go at these balls and see what happens. Um, and he's potted the yellow. Um, he cannot believe it. But I think that's the way it's gone for Tibbs tonight. Um, he has been unlucky, you can't deny that. At the same time, he's he's had a few chances that he hasn't taken as well. Um, and I think because of that, he hasn't put Steve under as much pressure as he would have liked. Because if your opponent's giving you chances and you're not taking them, your opponent's not going to feel under pressure to take the chances. Whereas if you're clearing every time they miss, you know, they're going to be under immense pressure and feel they can't afford to miss, which they can't in that situation. And I doubt that Steve has felt that way. Yeah, that's a nice pot there. He's um, he's put out a nice pot. He's just got to make sure the way he pots this, he gets the white down the table and to leave a nice angle on the yellow. And he's oh, he's gone too far. He's gone too far. Um, I fancy him to try and cut this back. Um, gonna be leaving a tough black potentially unless he can come three cushions and land close to him. No, he managed to hold the white with the bit of side and I think I think Tibbs can pot this. He's just shouted total, I think a little bit facetiously. Um but he's bought that, he's played a nice, he's killed that well. That's a better shot than it looks because he's played out a bit of running side just to bring the white round two cushions. I think if you had a proper referee, Tibbs would have just lost that game because he's uh, popped with the yellow where the white was still moving, but I don't think Steve's going to take that one off him. Oh, I think Tibbs is getting a bit of a uh, stick from Mark in the crowd. I think Mark's been the uh, more intelligent one out of me and him because I've come on the microphone and sat here uh, forming in and criticising at times. Whereas I'm day one next, whereas Mark's kept quiet, uh, especially his first time on the camera as well. Surely he'll be trying to dazzle with unwarranted amounts of middle on the white ball. Steve now looking for a split similar to his last and they haven't split at all. And as I said earlier, we're looking for the contentious moment where one player sets them up for the other and they don't split well. And Steve has just looked at me and said, who set them up? And this is why I think players should always rack for themselves so there's no dispute. Steve playing with a floating bridge hand, which is unorthodox, but Steve is pretty unorthodox in life. So uh, he's on yellows, and you can't really say that either color are on or open or look inviting. Yeah, just try playing a little safety there. Dolly the yellow to the pocket, try and cover as many of the reds as you can. Tim's going to be aggressive and play a pot, try and open them up. No, Tim's going you know, to play the double down to cover that pocket. Yeah, he's uh, doing a bit of Olympic curl in there, trying to uh, rub down the nap so he moves a little bit faster. I think Steve caught a touching ball here, but I think the shot he was looking at is the right shot to play, just to make sure you cover that red. Um, again, he's got this floating sort of bridge hand, which I don't know what he's doing with that. The player's having a bit of a laugh and a joke or something, yeah. That's, he hasn't killed that ball properly at all. Um, that was a clear case of Steve can't bridge over a ball, um, which won't surprise people who know him. Yeah, Tibbs just seems to slowly be moving his balls towards pockets. Um, 
this game is just crying out for someone to have an opportunity and maybe grab their frame by the scruff and open the balls up. But until that happens, Steve has played a nice shot here. He's just covered that yellow, yeah, just take a bit of control early on. I don't think there's much harm in. Yeah, it's not a bad shot from Tibbs. He's just keeping things tight here. Yeah. Um, probably wait for an opportunity to develop the red nearest the top left. Um, and slowly start trying to bring some of his balls into play. I think Steve needs to stay opportunity to open his balls up, which he has done. He had the control in that corner and he's um, he's opened the frame up a bit, trying to make something happen. Um, Tibbs probably just rolled his red top of the air on a not not his best effort, but slightly more cover than it was. Yeah, Steve just dropped down the middle. He's the two the two yellows in the middle of the table on the furthest left cause a bit of a problem. Um, I don't think he's tried to play into that red to pot that red, and I would be surprised if he had because that had no merit. Um, and unfortunately, the white has followed it in. As I said earlier, could it be a sign of the of the luck changing? But it didn't keep up. But you know, Tibbs had a chance here to peg back another frame and just give Steve something to think about. Tibbs, you know, still keeping it tight, playing the percentages. I think that um, you know, if Tibbs can bring this one back to sort of 7-4, 7-5, I think. You know, Steve may start to get a little bit twitchy. Um, start thinking about the finishing line and getting a bit twitchy because Tibbs is catching up. Particularly if Tibbs sort of can put a good sort of break and run of balls and potentially get a dish, you know, to plant that seed it out in Steve's mind. I think that's what Tibbs has to do, really. I don't think by playing tight, he's going to intimidate Steve much and make Steve think that he's not going to be able to give chances away. It's at the minute Steve probably thinks he's got a frame or two up his sleeve that he can give away to Tibbs and not really be too concerned in the context of the whole match. Um, but, you know, Steve won't be feeling that if Tibbs can win this one. Then, oh, I don't know why he's done there. That's a terrible shot. Yeah, so Steve now has an opportunity to wrap this match up. I think that yellow pass it into the top left. You know, I would just be looking to drop this one in the middle, follow through a little bit, play the yellow to the top left, setting yellow to the top left, and the black into. Oh, that's a terrible shot. And like I said, you know, getting a little bit twitchy when you get close to the finishing line. Um, you know, Steve. Steve would enjoy beating Tibbs, make no qualms about them. I think Tibbs would feel if he won that he was probably he was probably expected to win this match. Um, and I think Steve may have considered himself a little bit of an underdog coming in. So there's every chance that Steve could get a little bit twitchy and a little bit overexcited as the finish line gets in sight on the last couple of balls. And I, I think that's a case of that there. And even though he's he's got a He's got a cushion at the minute at 7-3 up. He won't want to see that disappearing because in this game things can change very quickly. Oh, Steve's played a lovely shot there. That's probably the uh, the shot of the match so far and probably deserves to win this frame. Tough black. Just take your time, set yourself. I don't fancy him to pop this. He's down too quickly. Yeah, he got down way too quickly on that shot. The white didn't even come to a rest when he was already down queuing. You know, there's there's no shot clock here. There's no need to play that. And I think, again, you know, that's that excitement of seeing the finishing line and going for it. Yeah, Tibbs again, just keeping it tight. Doesn't fancy Steve. Doesn't fancy Steve to pot this one. You know, just saying to him, if you pot it, well done, but I don't think you will. And I'll clear up if you miss. Oh, and Steve is just, he's, he's dead set for the double he's missed it by that match. That is unbelievable. 
Tips can play this round towards the middle pocket. No, he's just decided to uh, leave the white on top cushion. I thought he could have played the drop the red in the middle, and he would have been leaving the white in the middle of the table. So he would have been on his red, not even the black match, but decided to commit fully to the safety. And I think there's plenty of life left in this for him. Steve's gone for a fluke, and then Alan come off. Um, rather than landed too bad. This is the little twitchy man. Yeah, that's a that's a full ball snooker. It's a good shot from Tibbs because if he didn't get that, I think safe say this match would be over. Again, stop that. He's left him. He's left him dead straight on this red to the top, with the white and the cushion as well. It's, it's again, it's not easy from here at all. Um, to pop this ball and get on that last red is very, very difficult. Just a slight angle, but from the cushion, you're going to have to kill this one almost perfectly. Yeah, Tibbs turning it down. Um, again, I, I said it earlier, but I think the treble is on you. Miss this on the near side and treble it over. I think this is the chance that Tibbs has been waiting for now. Just got to be careful of this middle pocket here. It could come into play if he plays to uh, cut this red back. There we are. That was... That was so obvious that... I called it. I called it, so it must be obvious. Steve now, he's just going to play off the red. Bring the white down the table. A simple black for a pretty comprehensive eight to win and oh he's missed <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh I thought he missed Kill but Tibbs at the back of his kill. I thought I thought Steve uh, I thought Steve missed Kill down and that's why I burst out laughing so I was looking at the screen I couldn't see. But Tibbs at the back of the kill. I think Tibbs would be disappointed with that but a good victory for Steve.